Hi, this is Henning from flipnormals.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can do post work in Photoshop uh, on our 3D renders. On the left here, we can see uh, a raw 3D render from Moto. And on the right, we can see what it looks like after a couple of hours in Photoshop. Uh, this is um, a set from Moto, but uh, you can use any 3D applications out there. Uh, we're using basic passes or render elements from here, like ambient inclusion, specularity, reflection, and so on. This is not going to go through how to how to render those out. This is assuming you already have rendered them into Photoshop into a PSD file. So let's get started. This is what the file looks like straight from Moto. And as you can see, it looks pretty boring. Uh, it's missing a lot of contrast, color grading, uh, just interest. It needs a lot of cleanup. And in general, it's not too awesome. I'm not gonna go, I'm not actually gonna do the color grade or the post work on it here. I'm just gonna show you what I did because it would take far too much time if we were to do all of this manually again. But first, let's just go through, work. Uh, let's just start from the beginning here. Uh, the first thing I do is I do some fixes on it. Like if you see here, there are some UV errors, or some errors in the UV seams uh, caused by displacement maps. So the first thing I do is I, I paint those out simply using a clone brush. It's very easy stuff to do. Uh, next up is I add the reflection pass on top as a screen. This simply looks like this, and you can set the screen. Uh, you can also uh, add a um, layer mask to this and paint in, just, just breaking it up basically in the layer mask, which can also give you great results. So just breaking it up, deleting certain areas. This will just break up the reflection. Uh, I didn't do it here, but it can look pretty cool. Next up, transparency. Uh, this works uh, here. So uh, this works here because the only transparent object here are the eyes. So with, by setting trans the transparency to the screen, uh, I'm simply just making the eyes brighter. Next up, we have um, the diffuse layer. The diffuse is um, it's here simply to add more color to it. You can see before and after, before and after. And it's simply a uh, regular diffuse channel, just a, just a texture. Next up is a specularity. And this simply just makes it more colorful for now. It just makes the specularity more um, prominent and it just looks a little bit better. Next up is the ambient inclusion, which looks like this. I painted out some areas here because I, um, I didn't want ambient inclusion in those areas. Uh, but in general, it just adds more uh, detail to the image. Again, with and without. It's pretty subtle, but it's a nice little effect. Next up is some areas here are too hot, like it, the the chin here and some of the collarbones. So just use a brightness contrast node or effect to take it down a little bit. Certain er certain areas I want it brighter, like the top of the head. So I just I made a brightness contrast. Just a regular one, made it brighter. And I just painted in the areas I want it to be darker. Or just I just painted a mask for that. So let's just let it work here. I'm using a pretty heavy brush. There you go. Um, so yeah, you can just paint away the brightness, the brightness where you want don't want to go using just a mask. I have a secondary or third brightness contrast actually, because it's still a little bit too hot. Then I'm painting in some sub sort of scattering in on the ears here. And this is just a regular painted uh, layer, just to add some more interest to it. Uh, some more um, contrast in the values. If you want your image to read well, you still need you need good values. And I thought it was getting a little bit too boring in certain areas, so I just made it a little darker. I just painted it on top. Also, on the top here are two layers I have. One is a black and white layer. Uh, this is just to check your values. Because it's really easy for this to become too boring. And here not being distracted by colors or anything like that. So it's only the pure value. Next up is um, the highlight checker. This is simply uh, a levels which is just crunching uh, the blacks here. So the only thing you see is the, the areas with the highest contrast. This is really nice because this becomes this becomes more useful later on where you can really see the difference between um, where we can really see what the highest contrast is in image. Uh, 
So all right, um, this is the basic stuff of the passes here. I did, did paint some some stuff on top here just to make the scars a little bit more apparent. Uh, just a soft brush with some red on it, set to soft light and 60% opacity. The the layers, um, the blending modes I use the most are soft light and overlay, at least for this kind of stuff. It simply makes uh, a texture or a color less apparent. So it look it looks nice and blends nicely. In. Uh, after this, we have um, a little group called Painted. And what this is doing, it's it's simply just a paint over. It's just raw paint over. Like you can see here, I added some hairs, which looks pretty nice. It just makes them look, look more organic. And this is where your, pure, your core painting skills come in. The more you know about drawing and painting, the better your art is going to look like in the end. Next up, we have um, some color variation. This is just to break up the colors a little bit too. You can see this is just a map, or oh, just a layer with just crazy colors painted in, just to break up the color a little bit. It can become very monotone very quickly. Uh, so doing this just looks a little nice. Next up, this is a big one, the eyes. If you want a successful piece, you need to focus on the eyes. If you don't, the piece is gonna fail. At least it's gonna be really hard to make it successful. So what I did here, I just painted the eyes on top, pure paint over. No photo reference, or no, there's, I didn't paste a photo on top, it's just painted. Uh, some veins to it, just to make it more dramatic. Uh, and I also just made it slightly more saturated to make it look more natural. Then I painted over the teeth, just to make that look just, print, just nicer, really. And some saliva. And just a little fixer. You can see the eyes, his eyes are a little funky. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn how to light something like this, we have a tutorial on our site called Lighting a Portrait in Modo. The techniques used in that tutorial are very similar to the one I used here. So let's just see the difference though between this and the first render. Script this and turn on and off. So you can see the difference already is pretty huge. But we're still not there yet. We still have two massive steps left. One is the background. And the next one is color correction on top. So let's just start with the background here. Uh, the first layer is pretty simple. It's just a gradient, really, from dark to light with some saturation here, um, just to spark it up a little bit. I also used like a texture brush for this, just to give it more visual interest. If you use a soft brush, it can very quickly look pretty boring. Then I add an image on top, just a regular image of, of fire, and, and I set it to screen, uh, which will then hide everything which isn't black, or which is black, and leave only the light, the light points left. So just to make it more dramatic. I wanted this to be a fairly dramatic piece, uh, or where he was in control. Uh, then I added some, um, just these just two brush strokes really, and that's it. Uh, I just painted this with the whole lemon shift key and a texture brush and just dragging up. It looks pretty cool. The reason I add this is because it adds stability to the piece. I want the character Conrad to be in control. If you want a character to be in control, it's, it's an easy thing to just add two columns on either side, which makes him stable. Just a, comp a little compositional thing there for you. Next, uh, I just painted some uh, some light come behind him to give more focus to, his, to him. Again, this is where the value check comes into play. You can see a huge difference between this, for instance. It just makes it way more interesting. And uh, just this, adding the painted lights. If you had to choose between good value play and color play, I would always go for good value play. Values are really, really important. You can also use the um, highlight checker just to see what area with highest contrast is now. I, I want the focus to be on his eyes or in this area here. So, so you generally want this area to be the highest area with highest contrast. If your highest contrast is down here in the bottom right corner, uh, that's probably where your focus is going to be, and it's going to look weird. A uh, little brightness contrast. I love the brightness contrast adjustment layer because you have a lot of uh, power in it. You can very quickly change the look of of something like a background. Next, I also just painted some more um, light behind him. 
and some more texture lights, which looks kind of cool. But all this does take a couple of hours. It's not it's not something you do in five minutes. You really have to sit down and spend a lot of time with this. And if you do post work correctly, and if you do spend time with it, it's going to make your 3D art look better. It simply is. Pretty much everything I take out of 3D, if it's from V-Ray or Moto or whatever, it still needs some kind of post work. Even if it's just light color grading, you do need some post work on it in nearly all cases. I still haven't seen a single case where you don't wear color grading or some kind of post work on top wouldn't improve the piece. Next up, uh, I have to. I'm just. Ha I just have a layer where I'm just blending between the foreground and the background here, because you have you have a pretty nasty crease here, uh, and it just looks weird. So I just took a brush, a texture brush again, which I love a lot, and then just uh, sampled certain areas and just painted or painted over, just to blend in nicely. Just a simple layer with uh, in normal normal blending mode. Next, I have a group called. Um, Texture overlay. This is an image from, I believe, uh, cgtextures.com, which I use a lot. And it's just a nice image for um, for texturing on top. What this is doing is it's um, it's just making it more realistic, I believe. It's just making it uh, it's just breaking it up more and making making it more varied, which is usually in your favor. Uh, next, I have a layer just with some painted stuff on it. So just uh, a little bit of a pattern here and there. Just to again, break it up a little bit more. If you want realism, adding something like freckles on the list to his face uh, can really do quite a lot. Nothing in real life is perfect, particularly not a monster guy like this. So um, the more you can break it up and still keeping the shapes clean, uh, the better it is. You don't want to add noise to the image. Every single detail you add needs to matter to it. it needs to matter to the final image. So it's important to keep in mind. Again, with them without textures. It just adds a little bit of a finish to it. And then we have color correction. This is a big one. And I'm going to go through every single one of these with you now. So the first thing I do is I add, a, again, a brightness contrast. Which again, Gives you a lot of control on this. Um, so do that. Uh, next one. Um, this is a, this is a pretty nice trick. Uh, I paint just uh, dark. Uh, I paint basically some areas with a soft brush with dark values and some with light values. Then I set it to overlay, and this just gives me, gives you more focus certain areas. Uh, then I just take the percentage down to something like ten percent. And it's very subtle, but it's enough to shift the focus slightly to where you want it. I also painted some rim light here on him, which I think looks pretty cool. It just helps to sell the look and make it more natural. It kind of this bloomy, rim lighty feel. And this is all, again one of the areas where just painting really helps. Knowing color theory, for instance, will just help sell your images so much. Um, some subtle particle effects on top. Very subtle stuff. You don't want it to go too overkill with that. Um, then a black and white map, a black and white adjustment layer set to soft light. This is actually a kind of cool trick. I can show you. Uh, go down here where you have your adjustment layers. Set it to black and white. And just so set it to soft light. This makes it higher contrast and desaturated. This looks really cool a lot of times. You probably have to take it down though. So I took it down to about 30% here, I believe. Yeah, 34%. And I'm also painting away some areas just with a regular brush. And it can look pretty cool. Just a little pro tip there. Color balance is pretty important as well. And the color balance can change the feel of an image in an instant, I feel. You can very quickly change just the general feel like you can do here. So you can do some pretty cool things here. I usually tweak with, um, I first go into midtones and just change here. What I, uh, I just get a general direction. You want to be a green feel to it or red feel or what do I want? Then I go into after that 
I go into shadows and I just add some uh, some shadow color to it uh, and the bright, the color balance uh, adjustment layer can really help spice up the image. Adding some color or some color grading to it using the color balance can it's one of those things can, which can really push your image from a dull, boring image to something spectacular, or at least far better image, yeah, very quickly. Next one, uh, I have an image here, or just a layer filled with pink, set to um, screen, and uh, like 10%. You can see what it's doing, it's, uh, it's just adding color to the image and then setting it down to pass. It's kind of like using a photo filter. It's not much different visually from a photo filter. Again, checking the values to make sure it's working. The highlights, now you can see we have some contrast around his neck as well, which is what we want. And finally, we have some final tweaks to this, which is just an image, a layer. Let's see here. Again, the same thing I did before. Paint some areas bright, paint some areas dark, set it to something like soft light, and take the passage down. This gives give them focus. And finally, some uh, bloom to the image as well. One thing I'm doing frequently now is, let me just show you this, I was just for reduce resolution. All right, resolution is lower now, so now I can actually work with this. Uh, I make a new layer. Uh, I, I duplicate the entire image into a new layer using the hotkey Control Shift Alt E, which is a mouthful. You can also go to Image, Apply Image. This will simply just give a duplicate of whatever we have. Uh, next, I go to uh, Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask, which just sharpens the entire image, which can make it look more fo more photo real. Uh, next, go to Image. Uh, uh, sorry, Filter, Noise, Add Noise and add like 2% noise to it, which again makes it more look, look more photographic. And third, uh, just some subtle chromatic aberration. Control Shift R or filter, uh, lens correction. Let's see the load and under custom, you can now go under here, chromatic aberration. Let's just zoom in here so you can see what's happening and just drag it up. Let's just drag it up. And now you can see there's like a fringe in the end like a um, red and cyan fringe. Let's just take all this up. Now you can clearly see there's a green fringe to it. Uh, overdo this and you kill your image completely. Add, add the right amount and you can just add like a nice finish to it. Again, a uh, photographic effect. And that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you find it useful and um, please check out our other tutorials as well. Mm -hmm.